Hello and welcome to the Homeschool to Go Masterclass. My name is Huli. I am a mom and a teacher. I've been a mom for 3.5 years and a teacher for over 10 years. Today in this class, my goal is for you to leave here confident, certain that you can give your children the best possible education by homeschooling in less than 10 hours per week. We're talking compared to Waldorf, Montessori, Cambridge. These are some of the most prestigious methodologies as far as education around the world. And we're going to make sure that you feel that from the comfort of your home, you can also raise your children with these opportunities without compromising your professional career, your business, whatever way it is that you bring food to the table today. We're going to sit down and talk about some ways in which you can maximize your time and some ways ways in which you can provide top quality education. So if there are some questions that you feel were not addressed because they pertain specifically to you, some personalized attention that you're needing, know that if you stay until the end of this presentation, we will give you an opportunity to book a one-on-one -on -one free consultation with either me or any of the other homeschool to go teachers. So make sure you stay until the end and then fill out the applications about two minutes long and we will get you sorted. All right. So without further ado, let's get started. All right. If you don't believe that you have what it takes to achieve that intimidating task of homeschooling children in these uncertain times that we're living in, let me set the record straight so we, that we can move on to the good stuff. There's only one thing that you need, really need to be able to do this. The love that you have for your children. This is something that your teachers at school are not going to have. Your teachers at school can be passionate about education. They can have a certain amount of love for the children they're teaching, but they are not going to have the love that you have for your children. The same love that's made you do all the research that brought you here. The fact that you care about your children enough to be here today, to be looking for curriculums, that already puts you ahead of the curve for the success that your children can have in life. All that you're needing is the tools and we're gonna get started on that today. I know that you probably wonder how other homeschool moms, homeschool dads do it. But then when you try, if you've already tried, you second guess your resources. Did I pick the right curriculum? Is this the right choice for my child? Is my child performing according to standard? Then you change your direction because that curriculum didn't work. And then you give up before finishing the lesson plan that you started because you're not confident in yourself. You're not sure you're following the path that you're supposed to be following. It feels like your children are not enjoying the experience and now you're just the parent that's always nagging and pushing them to do work that they don't wanna do. That's already what's happening in the schools. So you don't want that pattern to have to happen at home too. And I know that feeling because I have been there very many times. I want you to know there is much fulfillment and happiness on the other side of this process, if you know how to do it right. And today I'm gonna take you there. First, I need to know that you're willing to invest two things. These are two non-negotiable components when it comes to homeschooling your children. Number one is caring about them, caring about your children, not caring about whether they're going to be better than the neighbors, not caring about whether they're going to be able to do everything that you ask them to do, caring about them and their future and their development. If you care about your children, number one, and then if you're able to invest 10 hours per week to their education, to your bonding, your relationship as a family, everything else will be there. The projects, the support, the effective teaching strategies, the STEM qualities, the resolved questions, the accreditation, all of that that you need other than your caring and your 10 hours per week is on the other side of this program. With my proven step-by-step -step strategy, your brilliant children who need reframing their relationship with learning will evolve, not just in core academics, but in emotional intelligence, conflict resolution, social skills. Yes, social skills. We'll get into that in a little bit because it's a huge homeschooling misconception. Your child will grow to be a holistic individual that can thrive in this uncertain world. Let's talk a little bit about the socializing piece, because this is one of the biggest myths when it comes to homeschooling. 
The truth is that when you look at the studies, homeschool children perform above average in measures of social, emotional, and psychological development. There are several studies that explain how sending your kids to school too young actually hurts them. This is because they start to look to their peers for lessons and for approval instead of their parents. When kids are this little, like pre-K, kindergarten, grade one, grade two, grade three, they are still developing, figuring it out who they are. And what's best for them is to have people around them to reassure them and to guide them. The problem is when they go to school, there's more peers and there are teachers and these people around them are not necessarily reassuring them all day long. It's pretty hard to find that support that you need emotionally when you're in school. So what the kids start doing is they start changing who they are to fit in because they need that sense of belonging. And in this book that I'm referencing here, you can read all about it. Honestly, if you're on the fence about homeschooling, read this book. It's going to clear a lot of truths for you. It's called Hold On To Your Kids. Um, and that'll explain the rest of the scientific proof that there is behind what it really entails to send your kids to school at this time, but it is an important decision to make. So I want to make sure that you feel confident before you take that step. There is a website that I'm going to show you in just a few seconds. It's called the NARI, the National Home Education Research Institute that works really hard on gathering the, the peer review studies every year on how homeschool kids are performing compared to kids in standard schools. And what we find is that not only they are better in academic measures, but they're better in psychological development. Research measures include peer interaction, self-concept, leadership skills, family cohesion, participation in community service. So homeschool kids participate in the community more than the school kids. And most importantly, self-esteem. Self-esteem is gonna be such a huge needle mover when it comes to the performance of the children in the world. And so that is a really important piece when we are talking about parent involvement. Let's talk a little bit about the overwhelming amount of options that are out there because I am not the only one who's created a homeschool program here. All of these schools, all of these programs are great and they sell a one size fits all approach. And what you want is not for your child to bend over backwards, to fit into the crowd, but you want them to stand out. You want them to develop their own unique potential, their gifts, their intrinsic potential, I call it, or their soul potential. And how about we top that with a community of like-minded conscious parents and teachers to keep you accountable, to keep you inspired, to keep you motivated. Community is so important when it comes to doing anything in life, really. So whatever it is that you're doing, right now as far as homeschooling, please make sure that you surround yourself with a community of supportive homeschoolers as well. All right, so let me tell you a story. Teaching for prestigious institutions, Cambridge institutions, using Montessori and Waldorf curriculums to homeschool other people's kids, watching parents at these schools where I was working and where these kids were going, drop 25,000 a year to have their kids go to school. And then also as the passionate and devoted teacher that I was, feeling so frustrated because I was under an unachievable pressure of giving children the attention that they deserve. The attention that they deserve is that one-on-one -on -one attention or one to three even, it's not bad if you have more than one at home. Um, I wanted to do this with 18 children in my class. And that's a small school because it was a private school. I wanted to make them feel supported, to look in their eyes and give them that reassurance that they need to understand why they chose to do a certain thing. But in a classroom, in order to survive as a human being, as a leader of the classroom, the teacher, you have to set very unnatural rules that treat children like robots. And you need to be very strict with those rules. And these rules are not always beneficial, but as a teacher, it's the only way to get by without chaos. As a parent, I know that this was not the education that I wanted for my children. And the pattern of the brilliant child in my class was always consistent with the parents 
being supportive at home and caring about what the child was learning and being actively involved in their learning. Even as teachers in the schools, we can notice that the kids that were ahead were the kids that had the parents that cared. So to me, there was no other alternative than creating a holistic program that combined Montessori, Waldorf, Cambridge, and all the meaningful aspects of the curriculums that I had seen create wonderful results in children and to empower the parents, the ones that hold the key to delivering it to their children in the way that will expose their unique gifts and talents. So what I'm trying to say here is that you hold the key and my goal is to give you the tools because nobody will know how to do it better than you. Here is what I'm going to share with you today. The eight best secrets, I call them, but really is how to avoid those eight biggest mistakes because we've already been conditioned on how we think that we need to teach and how we think that children absorb learning. It's really hard to fight that. So I just wanna point those out in order to make it easy for you as you develop your teaching style with your children. And the first thing is that you want to make it simple for yourself and for your kids. Because if you are confused and if you are overwhelmed, imagine how they're gonna feel. You're the leader. So the leader is supposed to be calm and collected and knowing what they're doing. And truth is when we think of homeschooling, can be a little bit overwhelming. So if we keep it simple, it's better. There are numerous ways of making your homeschooling simple. One of them I'll give you is choosing a, a learning topic per week. And then that way you can extrapolate all kinds of lessons that you're learning at home into what you're living in your day-to-day -day life, which is going to create a direct link between your lessons and life applicable content. So keep it simple, work with projects, and work with a theme per week. All right, that's the first secret. Okay, number two, big mistake. Don't bribe them or force them to do work when they don't want to. At school, they go to school early in the morning. They have to wake up. We already know that sleep is so important for the little children in their development. So in school, we have to wake them up early and send them over. And when they do that, they are forced to follow rules. They have to sit behind a desk. They have, they have, they have. This is a huge gift. Parenting and teaching are theatrical by nature. So it's important that you approach each homeschool time like you love it, which is the right mindset for having a child fall in love with learning. There's always gonna be wiggle room in your day-to-day -day life. There's no wiggle room at school, but in your home there is. If there's one moment where they don't necessarily want to do the work that day because they feel sick, they feel tired, they feel emotional, scratch it you know i've actually had so many homeschool families in my program that do four weeks on then they take two weeks off sometimes just one um and what they find is after the two weeks or the week of break is over when the children come back to the program again they are super into it they're way better their skills are growing and they actually want to get back into it because they miss that routine when I do it at home, I just do one week in between every month of, you know, we don't follow the lesson plans. We just do something else. And I kind of do it on purpose to make them miss the routine because that routine provides them with safety. And we'll talk about that when we talk about how we can maximize the time. But just to stick to this point, don't bribe them to do, to do the work because you're sending the message that it's work instead of quality time. So just present it as something fun that you're going to do together. Number three, getting frustrated over finishing up a lesson that is suggested by the curriculum. No computer, no program, no curriculum, no teacher is going to know exactly how to teach your child. You as a parent, however, have the task of figuring out how to adjust the curriculum to them. At school, there's too many kids. They all have to adapt to the curriculum. At home, you can be ahead of the curve by adjusting the curriculum to them. And there are several tactics for this. I can help you with your specific needs as we move forward in my training. And again, at the end of this training, if you apply for the one-on-one -on -one consultation with me, 
I can help you with that as well. The strategies that are going to work for your child are different than the ones that are going to work for my child. But there's so many of them and I am very much prepared to help you with whatever that is. I just need to hear what the dynamic at home is first. Okay, number four, thinking that your child has to get it right the first time. I feel like this is maybe more the case for overachiever moms like me, but I do want you to be patient. When your child doesn't get it at first, let them try, let them fail, let them be frustrated. Talk about the feelings of frustration with them. We include a lot of emotional development in our program because the emotional development is such a big piece of the holistic individual and their ability to succeed in the world. So give them a break and let them revisit at a different time. Always be sure to let them know when improvements are happening. And I'll tell you why. Because number five, not recognizing their strengths is such a big mistake. You, it's very important to always be noticing their strengths because we're going to build the curriculum around their strengths. Yes, it's important to have the growth mindset and there's also room for that in our programs and in your programs, but noticing their improvements is what will get them hooked on learning and is going to help them embody that growth mindset when they need to push through challenges. Number six, not listening to the needs of your child. This one is so common as a teacher and it's so easy to do because you have so many to take care of simultaneously, but as a parent, this is your biggest strength. So it's important that you use it. You will have to make changes to your initial plan, but modeling the ability to pivot to their needs is how you're going to teach them growth mindset because they're going to see you reconsider, restructure, and then they're going to know that's the same skill they need to develop to navigate the world. Number seven, giving them a step-by-step -step without letting them take part in the choices. This is so common for homeschool families as well because they can easily get bored with what there is to do. It's always the same teacher and it's also the mom or the dad and they're used to saying no to them or they know how to get around their parents. So a really good way of overcoming that challenge is by making them a part of the decisions. Instead of telling them, this is what we're doing today, you can tell them, I have five activities for us to learn about X and Y, and you can choose any of these to complete today. And then you can go over the activities and then they can make the decision which one they're gonna start with yet. So in our program, we give you five activities every week and then you let your child each day choose which one they're gonna do that day. Perhaps one day they're super into it, they get two done, perhaps another day they skip the day because of whatever reason and they, they want to change it a little bit and do it outside. It's important that your program has the flexibility enough to allow them to make some choices in the matter. Not that they're leading the entire operation because in the back of their heads or in their subconscious mind, they know they're not the most educated, equipped person to be the leader. So you don't want to stress them out with that responsibility, but you do want to give them some freedom within the boundaries of safety that you're providing. Okay, and then last mistake is that when you submit your letter of intent for homeschooling, which by the way, we help all the parents because we are very familiar with the different states and provinces, what they require for those accreditations to happen. You have to understand that by giving a letter of intent, you're telling the superintendent or the authority that you are now responsible for the education of your child. So while there are some requirements and some checkpoints that you need to be aware of and the very state by state, you need to understand that you have just taken the freedom to decide what are the important subjects that your child should learn. Meaning you don't need to get married to any curriculum for life, meaning you get to choose what matters. And that's important for you to determine early on. Okay, so let's talk about the actual rhythm. This is how you can maximize your time or maximize your rhythm. The first thing that you got to do is you got to use a little template like this where you have one slot for an hour every, every day of the week and you go through your day without making any judgments. You look at what it is that you did that day and you understand your flow. So the difference between a schedule and a rhythm is that a rhythm is natural. It flows. It flows. It has a direction. 
So it allows you to be in the moment. Now, what you're going to find out when you fill out the first three days, you start to notice the pattern. You probably eat around the same day every, uh, around the same time every day. You probably go to bed around the same time every day. You probably crash around the same time every day. For me, it's at 3 p.m. It's when I'm feeling really tired from all the morning activities. And then I just start to kind of short circuit and go on my phone sometimes for longer than I would want to. So I already know at that time I need to take a break. I need to do some meditation, some praying. I need to have some quiet time. It's important for me. So I suggest that you do this. This is the first step. And when you book your one-on-one, -on -one, you bring to me this template because once I look at it, I'm going to be able to tell you this is how you can maximize your rhythm. But I'm still going to give you some tips that you can work with today. So number one tip that I want you to have is to know to eat the frog first. So this is a habit that so many successful leaders in the world already know they have to do. So what this means is the hardest thing that you need to do that day the thing that you're probably have been postponing for a while, the thing that you're, you know, not really wanting to do is the thing that you probably need to do first because it's likely to be the thing that is going to make a difference. And when you do that first, if you don't do anything else in the day, you're already going to feel satisfied and successful. So if you don't do it and you keep postponing it, that feeling of dread that the frog is ahead is going to chase you for the rest of your day and you're not going to be able to perform as successfully so if you can make a habit out of eating the frog in the morning i promise you this will be a life altering realization i should be clear eat the frog after your morning routine right after your morning routine morning routines are really important we'll also talk about in our one-on-one -on -one. Okay, number two, organize your contraction activities before bedtime, nap time, quiet time. If you have little kids, they probably take a nap around the middle of the day. If your child has grown from the nap time, I suggest that in that middle block where we go from a.m. to p.m., you still reserve it for a moment of quiet time. So there's no talking in the house, there's just reading books, there's going in the corner to journal, there's writing, there's whatever it is that they want to do. Listen to music while they look at the, at the ceiling. But it has to be, listen to music with headphones, it has to be quiet. It also allows you to take that break, to decompress. And so you won't have a crash at 3 p.m. like I do. Um, but it also will create a flow in your rhythm. So when I talk about contraction activities, what I mean is contraction activities are all the activities that make your focus go into a narrow point. So art projects, fine motor skill activities, writing, mathematics, all of those are contraction activities. Now, when I talk about expanding activities, we're talking exercise, playing sports, going outside, exploring the forest, you want to make sure that you organize your contraction activities right before the moments of quiet time, the moments of, you know, right around the end of the day. You don't want to be running outside. You probably, if you were outside in the evening, you probably want to come in. Maybe you want to do like a little bit of writing before bed or something that brings your focus in so that you can flow into bedtime after that. Number three, so you know, for example, in my AM block, we're going to do a contracting activity. So I'm going to tell them, do you want to do an art project? Do you want to do a STEM project? And then they can choose between the two. And then they do the project and that's their contracting activity. And now we're moving into quiet time. The other thing that is really going to help you save time is choosing a weekly learning theme. So let's say this week we're learning about patterns and we're going to be creating some patterns threading some patterns with beads okay then we're also going to be talking about what are the patterns in the day there are different ways of describing how patterns apply to the world maybe you are driving outside and you look through the window and you ask them to notice patterns from what they see through the window so now you've just taken a theme that is purely academic but you've learned and taught how to extrapolate it 
into the real world. And if you have one theme per week, that's a much easier to do than if you're learning a thousand things at the same time. And then finally is to co-create the new rhythm as a family. So you're going to look at your old rhythm and then you're going to look at your, what you want your new rhythm to be. And you're going to ask them, oh, so when do you think is a good time to do our outside time? And they say, oh, in the afternoon. And then you're going to ask why, and you're going to have a discussion about it. And then at the end of the day, you're going to come to a conclusion and that's going to be really helpful. I also recommend that you guys do a family council. So what that means is that once a week, you're going to meet at dinner time and you're going to take notes on what are the things that you all want to accomplish together. And so when they say, I want to go to my friend's house on Saturday, then you're going to see, okay, let's see if there's somebody to drive you there Saturday. What is dad doing? What is mom doing? And depending on the availability and the needs of everyone, as a team, you're going to try to come to a conclusion where everybody can be happy. And if you can't, that's okay. It means maybe in another week, they'll have the opportunity. So that family council is really good for helping children understand to adapt to the needs of the entire family because we're a team, we operate as a collective. And then I guess there's one thing that I didn't include in here. I guess it was just kind of implicit in the contraction, but your expansive activities, you want to organize them somewhere in the day. You don't want to have an entire day of contraction, contraction, contraction. No, you want to have a flow. So let's say they finish quiet time. Now we can go for a walk in the forest right? Um, or we can go outside or we can do some yoga, whatever it is that suits your lifestyle and your family. It's important to have a good balance between contracting activities and expanding activities in your day to day when you create your family rhythm, especially for kids, but also for us. Think about it. It's not easy to sit behind a desk the whole day. Okay. So now I just want to talk to you a little bit about the program and how this program has affected all the families that have been a part of it. I want to welcome you to our program being the only bilingual and holistic program that exists in the world. Most pro programs will give you a curriculum, but we're giving you a curriculum that is flexible and we're giving it to you in two languages. And it's not just core academics. It also involves emotional development, conflict resolution, connection to nature and all these things that I believe are important for the formation of a wholesome child. I'll show you some testimonials now, then I'll show you more or less how we structure it in our platform so you can get an idea of how, you know, how it works in the day in and day out. And then we'll get to the one-on-one -on -one application opportunity. Hi, I'm Mike and I'm a homeschool to go dad. And this is my daughter, Kendall. My name is Jeanette and I'm a homeschool to go mom. This is Taven, my preschooler, or a kindergartner, I should say, <laughs> and my preschooler, Marison. What I love about homeschool to go is the fact that it gives me an opportunity to learn with my children. The biggest thing that's changed for us is our routine. So in the morning, we get to start first thing in the morning after breakfast, and we start with our exercise, mindfulness, and the arts and crafts. Yeah? What is your favorite part, Taven? Pooley. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that I really wanted to homeschool my kids, but I felt the pressure. I felt pressure that I wasn't going to be able to put this all together on my own. And so homeschool to go gave me that ability to, um, the confidence even to say, here's the curriculum, your kids are good, you're teaching them exactly what they need to be taught, and it's helped us with the structure. Uh, one thing that has changed since I've joined Homeschool to Go is the confidence I find in my children now, my son especially. Um, he's really starting to gain some confidence and, and grow into a, a good individual. One thing too that I really like about it is that my children are excited when I get home from work to come and show me the progress that they're, they're making in the program. A different sort of schedule so I can at least be active and involved in it too. I would say it's the projects and the STEM projects. So we love... Um, especially this new one that we are starting the compost. We have a garden at our new house and so we've been really excited to start that. You're going to get um, the opportunity to apply for coming up very soon. You'll be able to do a little tour of the platform. I don't want to you know drag this any longer because I feel like I've had you here for a while now. 
Um, but in the objectives, these are all the prerequisites that you're going to need for creating your portfolio. When you send your letter of intent to the authority or the superintendent, this is one of the most important documents that you want to have. So that's going to be there. It's also, there's also going to be instructions on how to use the program right there. Um, but what I want you to see real quick is how we have a theme per week. And when you go into each one of the weeks, you get a story. The story comes with subtitles, encourages our children to read. I like being you, said the reflection in the mirror. And then with each story, you're going to get a package of activities. And in the first page, you're, we're going to have our I can statements, our goals, some instructions, some expansion activities, as well as stretch activities, which are ways in which you can extrapolate the learning for this week during, you know, times outside of homeschool. And then we're going to give you five different activities for you to choose from. And all these activities are going to be working the skills in literacy and in mathematics that are particular for this grade milestones and skills. So that is more or less what you're gonna find week by week along with the mindfulness program and the emotional development resources. Okay, and finally, let's get to it. So we chosen to give a discount to those families that are early birds. Why? Because this happens every year and we have so many applicants and we can't get to all of them and we have to turn some of them down, unfortunately. So we thought we'd do things a little bit different. We give a 15% discount to all those families that choose to send their applications in advance. So after you see this, you'll get to an application. If you fill that application and book your one-on-one -on -one with me in the following weeks, you will get a 15% discount in any of our programs. What is going to happen in this discovery call that we're going to have together? We're going to identify your family rhythm. So if you have it, bring your template from the chart that I've just given you. You're going to tell me what your needs are as far as race, how you want to raise your children, what their talents are, what their challenges are. Now I'm going to give you some tips and pointers to maximize your time as well as for teaching strategies for your children. Number three, we're going to set your goals for the year of homeschooling that is starting, and I'll help you draw a roadmap. And number four, if you're interested, we're going to determine if homeschool to go is the right choice for you. So if you want to be a part of our community, this is an opportunity that you will get if you come to this one-on-one -on -one and you fulfill your application. If this is not an opportunity that you will get, I guarantee you after this chat, you will leave this call feeling that you have what it takes. You have what it takes to make it happen. So this is my gift to you and your gift to me is that if you're in this journey and you let me be a part of it, it's already so fulfilling for my soul, for my mission. This is what I came here to do along with the teachers and the team at homeschool to go So thank you for your time. Thank you for your trust. And I look forward to meeting you. If you fill out your application and book your one-on-one, -on -one, within the next two weeks. Have a beautiful day and thank you for coming today. Bye-bye.